which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Councillor Wood, are we on record? Thank you so much. Councillor Wood? Here. Councillor Escabel? Present. Councillor Allen? Present. Councillor Hardy? Councillor Nisley? Here. Councillor Vendetti? Present. Mayor Villagrana? Present. Uh, I just would like to say welcome people out in the audience. Uh, I think it's great that you're all here. And I do, before I forget, I do want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. A safe and happy Christmas and Happy New Year. I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Second, please. Second. Any discussion? None? Roll call, yeah, please. Wait, 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 wait. It's Hold on. Agenda meetings. Um, 5E, no, that wasn't it. Last meeting, 5D. Shows that I was present. Record to be corrected. On 5B? Yes. You need a motion? I do need a corrected motion, please. Make a motion that we approve the corrected consent agenda. Second. Further discussion? None? Roll call, please. Councillor Vendetti? Aye. Councillor Escabel? Yes. Councillor Wood? Yes. Councillor Allen? Yes. Councillor Nicely? Yes. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. Now we have uh, administrative information, manager and council reports. Council, any reports? Please. Uh, so manager report, uh, last week we had the big one storm. Um, I want to thank Public Works and all the city staff for uh, actually jumping in there and, and helping out, uh, getting tree branches picked up from the streets, getting the roads cleared and, and keeping people safe. Um, so Sam and crew and everybody else, thank you very, very much for that. Um, just pretty busy with the stuff and working on a lot of things at this point. Any council member reports? Mr. Escobel? Uh, Fire Protection District, December 7th. Um, McKinnons gave us a big thank you. Uh, Mr. Jim Carocci resigned. Uh, they're talking about buying a new foam for the fire trucks. And uh, they've got, they used the, one of the fire trucks to fix our flag, flagpole out of the cemetery. That's all I have. Thank you. Any other council? No report. I want to comment on something. Yes, sir. And I don't know if you want me to comment on here or if you want me to go to the discussion items. Alan, no, go ahead. could you use your microphone, yes, please? Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Please, Mr. Nicely, go, go ahead. ahead. Um, we had a meeting last Monday. I was unable to attend to that um, due, due to unforeseen circumstances. Thing was, is that I looked through the agenda item before I, before I was, didn't show up here. Um, a day before, um, what was on the agenda? I, I went ahead and I, I text Sean and says, you know, I, I'm cool with everything that's on the agenda. Everything looks good with me. If you don't need my vote, if you need my vote, call me and I'll make the vote. There was also another item added to the agenda through executive session. Now I don't mind that we do votes because of an executive session. But we shouldn't be voting on something that wasn't on the agenda that particular day. Because I could have provided arguments for or against. I never had a chance to do that because I never knew it was going to be on the agenda. So when there's somebody missing like that, it's sort of an unfair advantage to be left out of that situation. I think we should, if we decide that we're going to have to need a vote, and unless it's an emergency vote, I think it should be put off to the next agenda and placed on the agenda. Will be taken under consideration, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, I don't have any reports. I've been to a lot of meetings, but uh, do for other organizations and stuff. So <laughs> it's been a busy day. Uh, 
we'll move on to our guest speakers. Mrs. Gail McKinnon, please come up, state your name and your address, please. Short person. Gail McKinnon, 207 Courts here in town. I have two things. Uh, first is regarding ordinances and zoning codes. I'm here to beg and plead that something be done with my neighbor. Last Memorial Day, he pushed the button scared two families with two uh, sets of small children. Across the street from me, we have two s different elderly people, homes of elderly people. Our particular part of the uh, city is not zoned for auto storage or auto salvage. It's not zoned for recreational vehicle storage or recreational vehicle salvage. We are not zoned as a junkyard. We are not zoned as a salvage yard. O nor are we a collection repository for tires. The weeds this past summer were neglected and they grew as high as the outsheds and above the vehicles in the yard. This is a health concern. It's a breeding zone for mosquitoes. There are varmints in there. Not only that, it's a fire hazard and he smokes. And when he's finished, one of these days, there are a few other locations in that vicinity. So I am, Councilman Nisley worked with me until my family tragedy, the end of August, took me away. Chief Prickett got involved, and this man lied to Chief Prickett. So I'm going to continue to push. And I please, please, please. These zones are these ordinances have been on the books since Florence became a community. We've talked about weeds. We've talked about dogs. We've talked about bicycles on sidewalks. They're, they're, they're there. I just am asking for a little let's take care of it, please. Then good stuff, guys. On to museum stuff. Uh, beginning in January, we're going to start celebrating our 150 years. Each month, we're going to do something different. So on Saturday, January the 8th, from 4 to 7, we're going to have a happy 150th birthday party, and we're going to meet 18 people. And so we invite you to meet these 18 people and see what we're going to do for the month of January. Before you tonight is a special event uh, liquor permit. We are serving wine and cheese. We're not selling, we're only serving. I will be here um, when you get to that particular part of your meeting. If you have any questions, I will be here to answer. Then in February, we're gonna meet some sweethearts. May not necessarily mean what you think it means. Um, and then again, I will work with Jess and get a few other uh, permits lined out for the coming year because um, in February on the 5th we're going to do um, again just serve not sell but serve wine and chocolate so we've got some exciting things going and we're going to partner with um, our cement plant they're celebrating 125 years in April and we're still working out those details and so we'll get those to you when we can. So anyway, I thank you. And again, I please, please, please ask for some teeth in this um, ordinance and help get rid of the trash, please. Thank you. 
one more thing with our wind. True to form, I love to go to Las Vegas and I'm pretty good out there. One of his trees burned down and I complained all summer. We're, we have a blind curve. Coming down the hill, very few of us will stay to our side of the hill, whether we go up or we go down. Most generally, the drivers are right smack dab in the middle. One of his trees, there again, is on part of the street. It's not Sam and his crew's job to clean his debris off of his property, but it is a traffic hazard because it's in the blind. Now I'm done. Thank you. Our next visitor is Mr. Tim Jordan. Hi, Tim Jordan, 844 Sumo Avenue. Uh, what I wanted to do uh, with the agenda was to discuss about employers' counsel. However, um, the way it's set up on the agenda is the public cannot comment, public comments for matters not on the agenda are after you all already vote. There's no section in here that says John Q. Public or Tim Jordan can come up here and say, I want employers counsel pulled from the agenda. There's no descriptive item in here on why <coughs> there's $6,400 going out to employers counsel. And from my previous quarter request, one person from council signs the check. I have him right here. And so far you all have spent close to $14,000 of taxpayer money on workplace investigations. I don't know what's going on, but I think you all need to start asking some very tough questions. I don't know the process other than when you guys come in here and vote for this consent agenda. Do all of you get an invoice? in your council packet and know what you're voting on because only one person signs that check. So that leaves six people in the dark. I don't want to come in and blindside anybody, but when it comes to workplace investigations, and I mentioned this at the coffee chat, you all need to know what's going on and where our money's going. This is getting ridiculous. This is close to $20,000. And I have no idea why, and neither does anybody else. But I'm going to find out. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to stop probing and looking. If I get no comment, that's fine. So I'd like to know what these two checks are for. Typically, you have contracted out with this vendor for employment posters, workplace assessments, workplace investigations, staffing assessments. There's nothing descriptive in here tonight. So if you all voted on this, which you did, and no one signs the check until the end of the night, what did, you vote to, what did you vote to pay for? Was it professional services? Was it workplace investigation? What is it? I'd love to know. That's all I want to know. What, what did $6,400 of our money go to tonight? Thank you. Thank you. Our next visitor is Janelle Dodd. Hi, Janelle Dodd, 534 West Main Street. Um, I am here tonight just to kind of echo something that I already said at the Mayor's Coffee Chat on Thursday. Um, as you see in your packet and one of your upcoming items, you have approval um, of posting locations for 2022 for your, um, for your meetings. So that was something that I found in the state statute to not have been followed for the past three years, um, which is that you need to establish the place where you're going to post your meetings ahead of time. Um, and I did go through all of <laughs> the website. It was quite a lengthy process. Went through the website, went through all the minutes and packets, and saw that um, not all of the meetings were posted online. 
and I found that they were special meetings. Um, so I know that we're following the state statute that we need to give 24 hours notice of a meeting, but that's only being done outside of City Hall, which can be an accessibility issue for people who can't necessarily get transportation to City Hall every single day, um, or who may be afraid to leave because of COVID and so on. So. What I'd like for you to do is um, to establish that location and to consider also a digital location instead of just the physical one outside of City Hall. Um, and I think that most people would appreciate that uh, because we do have people that can't make it every single day to check that, um, to check that kiosk. The other thing is um, it's, it's a request kind of along a vague state statute that says that Meeting minutes need to be promptly recorded. There's no definition of promptly, <laughs> um, unfortunately. But if you look through your packets and you look through what you've approved tonight, or what you will approve tonight, um, there are gaps in the time that meetings have happened to the time that they're brought to you for review of a couple of months in some places, and one was even three and a half months. Now I know that this um, term promptly is subjective, but if you could identify and just kind of define what that means to you and set that deadline for the city to have that presented. I would really appreciate it because, you know, we want to know what's going on and we want to see the minutes. So um, just if you wouldn't mind doing that. There is no statutory requirement, so I could see why maybe you wouldn't want to do that. But um, I did ask who to send that to. I had previously sent it to the city clerk. Um, the city manager did respond to me and so that they would bring the other issue um, to you. And since then, there were also meetings posted at the kiosk that were not posted online. So I thought I'd bring it up again at the coffee chat and then here to you tonight in case it wasn't sent to you in an email. Um, and I did request that that be done. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. And that fulfills all the people that have signed up to speak. So now we'll go to action items. Yeah, I'm sorry, but under old business we have none. And uh, possible discussion items is a possible grant opportunity. Mr. Sh Garrett, sir. If you want to come on up. This is Byron Allen. He'll be doing the presentation. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, joining me is Jonathan Sims. He's with our architect group, Thomas Ite. I had the opportunity to address this council a couple years ago, a couple months ago, regarding the parking matter. Okay. Better? Hello? Can I get one? Oh, yes. Oh, here we go. I got one. Thank you. My apologies. Uh, my name is Byron Elliott. I represent the ownership group that owns uh, the property located at 200 South Pikes, 201 West Main, uh, 106 Railroad. Thanks for the opportunity to, to address you this evening. I had the chance to speak to uh, the council about two months ago, uh, specifically on the subject of parking. Uh, the two properties that we're developing, 200 South Pikes and 201 West Main, trying to resolve a parking issue uh, so that when those properties are fully developed, there's adequate parking for the tenants. Uh, since that time, I've had the opportunity to meet with Sean. Um, We've had an opportunity to review a couple courses of action on how to address that issue. But most recently, we've found a grant opportunity that could not only address that parking issue, or at least part of the parking issue, but also would serve as an opportunity to help with some infrastructure and renovation efforts. And not only the couple properties we own, but the Rialto and the Senior Center. And then to potentially address uh, the plaza, depending on the outcome of the city's vote on uh, the Plaza Square, uh, just to the east of 200 South Pikes. Uh, what you have in front of you is just for contextual purposes, pictures of the buildings that we're working on uh, and the buildings that are owned by the couple entities in town with whom we've coordinated with. 
Uh, this document was prepared by Jonathan Sims. He's our architect. He's here in the crowd. He's here to address any questions that you may have on the technical side of the house. Uh, the grant that I'm speaking of is the same grant that was applied for and received by uh, the group Unbridled based on their work that they're doing um, with the St. Cloud Hotel and the Fremont Provisions Restaurant in Canyon City. Basically, the grant has a number of factors. It's a $70 million grant, fairly time sensitive as uh, I believe 55 to 65 million of those dollars will be allocated by mid-January on a first come first serve basis for those grant applications that meet a number of criteria. I'm gonna run through those real quick and I think you'll see that what we're proposing meets that grant criteria and also comports with the uh, foreign strategic plan for the city. So <clears throat> um, the grant application is looking to uh, the following factors. One, they wanna make sure that grant monies are being applied to shovel ready jobs. So trying to boost economic development in the local municipality, shovel ready jobs by local contractors. Two, uh, is the grant money being applied to keep the historic look and feel of the subject property? Uh, three, is there participation and synergy being created between various for-profit, non-profit, and potentially public entities in the space? Uh, does the space um, provide for local musicians, local artists, to come together in the community uh, and receive support from the community? Does it drive economic business to the local municipality? So you can see all of these economic um, considerations and the cultural considerations um, align nicely with what we're proposing here. Now, <clears throat> I know that some of the issues are unresolved at this time, uh, to include the, the plaza discussion of what to do with that piece of property, but what we're proposing is to put in a grant application to address at a minimum the following. One, uh, deferred maintenance on the Rialto. So as you all know, uh, the Rialto and all the buildings I described are on the National Historic Registry. They're all conforming properties. The Rialto has uh, a long scope of work of deferred maintenance. We believe that uh, if we package that deferred maintenance in a cost estimate appropriately, we could push that through in this grant application and finally shake the monies loose to complete those renovation projects. Some of the sidewalk repairs uh, in front of the Rialto and around in front of the Florence Hotel and potentially any other sidewalk repairs in downtown Florence. Um, as to the issue of parking, there is uh, property just to the south of the buildings on the south side of Front Street that run along the, um, the, railroad, the railroad. So you have three parcels there. The two westernmost parcels we believe are owned by the city and then the easternmost parcel is owned by the senior center. What we would propose is uh, the paving of that thoroughfare, so it creates an additional thoroughfare and up to 105 additional parking spaces, all covered by monies uh, received from the grant. Um, we would look to do a phase two application of grant money pending the approval or the decision one way or the other as to the plaza. If the plaza was approved and we were going to section off that, that block or so, we would propose to pay for the paving of the plaza and any of the little ancillary projects in and around there through grant money. And then um, <clears throat> we're in initial discussions with the senior center about potentially addressing any issues they have with plumbing and electrical upgrades to make sure that the interior of the bones of the building uh, keep up with the exterior of the, of the property. So I don't have an action item to request from you tonight, but in the next two weeks or so, I intend to submit an initial grant application my grant application would be strongly supported if I had a letter provided by at least one city council member or the mayor. And so I can provide additional details as to the overall scope of the plan sometime in the next two weeks in the hopes of getting your support. Any questions of me? Any technical questions of our architect? Discussion, gentlemen? No. Matt? And so um, I did meet with Barney, and I just wanted him to come and present this to you guys to see if, <coughs> if this would be something you support. Um, as he stated, he would be putting in for the grant. They'd be doing all the legwork. We would just be issuing that letter of support. 
um, to possibly seek this, which could address quite a few issues, help the Rialto out, get things built up, and and um, a lot of different things. So I just wanted him to come talk to you guys tonight and see if you guys would be in support of that, and then we can write that letter of support for him to go ahead and put um, move forward with the grant application. Mr. Vendetti? I'm in favor of that. Ms. Wood? Yeah, um, just to clarify, is that property that he was talking about on like a kind of by the senior center to the west of it, is that owned by city? We are double checking on that. I believe that it is, but I just want to make sure. But I, I, I'm not positive at this point. Okay, thank you. Mr. Allen? No, do we have our parking lot committee going yet? No, so we um, we asked for people to put in. We've gotten three letters of interest. Is that correct, Jessica? Yes. Um, and we were asking for four, so um, it hasn't been finalized yet, but well, we are working on it. Thank you. No, I think this is a pretty good idea. Mr. Nicely? I would agree as long as the the this endeavor isn't contingent upon our agreement that that property to be used for that, we certainly need discussion to even find out if that's our property. Yeah, and so, so when, if if we have to commit to that property as for as part of this agreement, I, I would say not at this time. No, and so at this point, it'd just be a letter of support to go out the grant. We wouldn't be committed to make sure that that property is used for parking. Mr. Escobel? I'm in support of it. I think it'd be a good thing for all the city of Florence. We need all the help we can get. We appreciate it. I'm in favor of a letter of support for your project. So, sir, if you would. I'll get one typed up. Thank, Thank you. you kindly. Thank you. Our next item for discussion is the invoice for the water truck. Finance officer, please. Good evening, Council. Um, before you, page 40 uh, is the invoice for a 2021 budgeted item for the water truck. So the we thought that it wasn't going to be able to be um, included in the 2021 because of how uh, manufacturing and cars are, but we found out that the truck is ready um, and ready to pick up. So the invoice in front of you is for a budgeted item. Um, it's under new equipment. Um, the funds are still in the budget for 2021. So I just wanted you to be okay and, and approve uh, the purchase of the truck so we can go and pick it up. Thank you. Any discussion on this item, council? Seems to be considerably more than what we was paying for our police vehicles. Ms. Cobbler? Uh, you know, I, I can't answer why the difference in the vehicles are a different price. The only thing I could tell you is the police vehicles do at the end cost more because you have to add more stuff to it. But, but our police vehicles were cheaper than this. Mm. Weren't they running into less than 30? 32. 32, okay. Yeah, yeah, because this is just a basic work truck and theirs gets a lot of bells and whistles. And oh, this and whistles. base price here isn't what uh, what we're looking at to approve? Um, I think so, and the truck, the yeah. Yeah, so for the incentives. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's 25000 And the yeah. truck that it's going to replace will sell that um, to recoup some of that. Okay, very good. I, yeah, I don't know how much we'll get out of it, but it will. As long as it wasn't the 38. No. Thank you. No. <laughs> Any other discussion? None? Uh, moving on to action items. Uh, action item 10A, special permits. Special event permit for the Florence Pioneer Museum. Event to be held January 8, 2022, from 4 to 7 o'clock. Uh, Ms. McKenna, would you care to come up and I would ask the city council to, or I would ask the, the city clerk to explain to us, please. Yep, so uh, Mrs. McKinnon explained what the event's going to be. All of the paperwork has been submitted, the fees have been paid, and everything is in order. Thank you. Uh, any quest any discussion questions for the Pioneer Museum presenter? We have three types of wine. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> no question. I, I would like to make a motion that we approve this. Uh, yes. <laughs> but, uh, 
Hold on, gentlemen. Uh, we need to uh, have any public comment. Anybody wants to speak to this particular item? None? Thank you, Mr. Kennan. And Mr. Knight, if you would go ahead and make that motion again, sir. <laughs> okay. I'd like to make a motion we approve 10A. Second. Discussion? None? Roll call, please. Councillor Nisley? Yes. Councillor Allen? Yes. Councillor Wood? Yes. Councillor Escobel? Yes. Councillor Vendetti? Aye. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. You have it, ma'am. Thank you. And again, thanks for what you do, and Merry Christmas to you guys. And Thank you for what you do. We're going on forward. Bye. Thank you. We love you. <laughs> we're trying to get on Santa Claus good list uh, sir <laughs> next item is 10b resolution number 2021-12-20 a resolution adopting the Colorado retention manual for the city of Florence city clerk please yes so council um I did just receive word back from the State Archives Society, so I had to redo the resolution, and I gave that guy that um, new resolution to you. I also put it on the website under our uh, agenda additions so that the public can see that. But um, I've been very busy lately looking into various city records and um, found that we need a better system for storage and destruction. We don't have a records retention policy at all for the city that I'm able to find. So um, I'm asking the council tonight to adopt by resolution the state archives retention schedule to ensure that we have a black and white policy that anybody can follow for the retention and destruction of our files and records. Thank you. Discussion? Mr. Vendetti? Uh, I have no discussion. Ms. Wood? Uh, no, do, can we provide a link on there? Just say, like, if someone's looking it up, they can... Yes, so we actually have to opt in as the city first before oh, cool. they will provide me right. with what that schedule is. But once I get it, I can put a link on there. Perfect. Thank you. I believe I can. I'll double check with the state. But yes, if I can, I will. Cool. Thanks. No Mr. Yes. Mr. Nicely? No comment. Mr. Escobel? No comment. Public input? I have none. So public, no public comment. So... I would entertain a motion to accept the resolution. I make a motion to accept the resolution number 2021-12-20, adopting the Colorado Retention Manual for the City of Florence. Second. Further discussion? None? Roll call, please. Councillor Allen? Yes. Councillor Vendetti? Yes. Councillor Wood? Yes. Councillor Escobel? Yes. Councillor Nicely? Yes. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. Our next action item is 10C, intergovernmental agreement between the City of Canyon City Police Department and the City of Florence concerning use of the City of Florence shooting range. So good evening, Council. Uh, a couple months ago, Canyon City, uh, one of their uh, commanders approached the chief and I. Um, they, for 10 or 12 years, they've been using the uh, DOW range at the college out on Highway 50. Um, I'm not really sure what happened with their their use there, or why they're not happy. So they approached us, asked us what they could what they could do to uh, uh, be part of our shooting range. So we came up with the uh, the standard agreement that we have with Fremont County, with ICE, and all the other governmental agencies that use our shooting range. Um, as you can see in the packet, they'll provide uh, a shed like we have for all their own storage. Um, any of the gear or the uh, facilities you, or that Florence owns, it won't be used by them. They'll provide all their targets, their uh, instructors, so it won't cost us anything um, to let Canyon City use it. Um, you can see down through there that uh, the scheduling is done by SCEDA, or SCEDA, however that's pronounced. So mm -hmm. we all have access to it. So there's never really a, uh, a scheduling conflict. They would get on, they would schedule their days, and it's never more than... Uh, twice a month, just like us, uh, just like ICE and Fremont County. So we're asking that uh, you guys approve the uh, the use by Canyon City Police Department uh, for the use of our city range. Any discussion, City Council? Mr. Knightley? Um, you said in, in your information packet there that you submitted, says that you, we would be contacting dispatch 
and they would be sending somebody out there to raise the flags whenever it was time to do their event, correct? Each individual agency, yeah, they, they're the ones that, because that, the flag is right there at the bottom of, in a box. So like when, when our department uses the range, we would, we would, you know, our instructors go out there and do the flag. So Canyon City has their own instructors. They would do the same thing. Um, okay. By contacting dispatch, it just lets them know that uh, there's somebody on the range. Now, do we go out there and double check that that place has been secured afterwards? Do like the yeah, because we have a patrol. Yeah, it's watch our property. We yeah, we have a patrol sure watch for our in, yeah secure. Yes, we do. Okay, it's checked four or five times um, a day. Here's my comment on this. Most, you know, in in business at least, when there's an agreement, there's usually something to be had by both parties. We've got a lot of investment in that there. And here we're saying, sure, just go ahead and use it. I mean, it makes perfect sense that not everybody needs their own shooting range. It makes perfect sense that we do that. But they're doing training sessions there. We do training. Can't we get free training? And, uh, you know, and... and under the... Uh, under, uh, under sort the, of uh, like an in-kind contribution? Can't we... Can't, we, can't we have that in the agreement where we're going to get free training for letting them use our shooting range? Yeah, and pursuant to the, under the authority for agreement, the, uh, the state statute, we do, just like with Fremont County and the agreement you guys signed, which is the exact same uh, last year, we do mutual training. So when, they're, when, they're, when their people are out there, if they're doing a select fire like the MP5s or whatever, and some of our officers haven't, we get mutual training with them, just like when we're doing some of our tactical training they'll send some of their officers over there. Um, there's no monetary things exchanged because they're providing no, all I their- No, I understand that. But we do get mutual training with even Fremont County. Um, the, only, the only agency we don't train with is ICE, um, but we train with the State Patrol. Um, they all use it too. Um, so we train with the State Patrol, Fremont County, and then with the addition of Canyon so that we have some different, each individual agency brings something else to the table that, uh, that the other agency might not have had. Well, here's what I found, though, in the last, even in the last year, I found the city being hornswoggled by a few agreements that didn't have certain specifications, certain things in writing, um, and, and, you know, free grazing, and I'll give you a water tap, um, something like that. Um, it didn't work out. I mean, we, we need something in writing. I like to see something in writing where it shows our people we're getting something back for our asset. Uh, so you... Just to include, you know, and, and if it is your practice to participate in their training sections, sessions, I'd still like to see it be written in our agreement. So I guess I don't understand, I mean, so you, you want something written that states that, that the mutual training, see we don't always do that, but it, what I'm saying on this, with them using our range, if they bring a, uh, if they bring a sniper course to our range, it's it's hosted by Canyon City at Florence Range. We would get some. We would get something. We would get to put a person in there if we had a sniper for our uh, tactical team, which we don't have a tactical team. Um, that was just a, a an off the wall example. But if you want that written in there, then we'd have we'd send it back to the uh, city attorney, and he can put a provision in there, and then it'll have to go back to their city attorney. Um, but this is the, uh, Mr. Nisley, this is a standard agreement that we did with Fremont County. With it State might Patrol be standard, but sometimes standard isn't up to snuff. Okay. I mean, just, you know, status quo doesn't mean that that's the way it should be. <coughs> sure. So I would like to see something in there for us. We have assets that we're giving away. I'd like to see something in writing that we're giving back. Well, what, what asset are you specifically saying that we're giving away? The, the shooting range. But it's not being used at those I times. I toured that. We have got... Thousands and thousands of dollars sure. invested into that. We do. But the days that they would be using it doesn't infringe on our city um, police department or anybody else. That's why we use this scheduling thing. They're providing everything. They'll put everything of theirs on the range. We've got a lot of this building we're not using, but I'm sure not going to let them move in here without okay. paying anything. Okay. I mean, I, I want to see something come back. That's my comment. Um, okay. I'll pass. Mr. Escobel, any discussion, sir? No, sir. Mr. Allen? No, sir. Matt? Ms. Wood? No. Mr. Vendetti? No. Uh, the only thing that, Officer Benelli, that I would, once upon a time we had a complaint about shooting after 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. 
could we please make sure that they understand no shooting after 10 o'clock because the uh, neighbors and the people in Florence. It's specifically in, in the, uh, the uh, you know, the, the wording that we gave them that there are, there's no night fire. Every agency does some night fire, um, but it, it ends at 9 p.m. I know that uh, it has stopped, and thank you for that. But sure. I just want to make sure that they understand that. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Now, public comment on this item? None? Uh, council, do we want to table this until Mr. No. Nisley's writing, or do we want to go ahead and vote on it? Go ahead and vote. Mr. Vendetti? Go ahead and vote. Ms. Wood? Oh. Mr. Allen? Oh. Mr. Nisley? No. Mr. Escobar? The only way I say we vote is if we do have something that I know, and it's been recorded that we know this is going to be changed, and I agree with it that way. So then I would entertain a motion. I make a motion that we approve the intergovernmental agreement between the City of Canyon City Police Department and the City of Florence concerning use of the City of Florence shooting range. May I have a second, please? Second. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Vendetti? Aye. Councillor Allen? Yes. Councillor Wood? Yes. Councilor Escobel? Yes. Councilor Nisley? No. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. Our next item is that uh, we need to appoint a mayor pro tem. Uh, so, select and appoint. Yep. Select and appoint. Select and appoint. Uh, select and appoint. So, do we have to open up the request? Nope. It's, it's just, it's, it's a decision for me. It's a decision amongst the body. So this is the one of uh, the times that you get to select your leadership amongst the group uh, that is here. So um, it's someone to uh, perform the mayoral duties in the absence of the mayor. I uh, would recommend Mr. I would like to recommend Mr. Escobel. Do I have any further recommendations? Any discussions on the the appointment of Mr. Escobel for us. Mr. Vendetti? No. Ms. Wood? No. Mr. Allen? No, sir. Mr. Nisley? Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Escobel? Well, I'm glad to do it. Thank you, guys. So um, just to formalize it, make a motion and, and vote on it. I would make a motion that we approve Mr. Escobel as mayor pro tem. Second. Second. <laughs> yes, sir. <Third. laughs> Discussion then. Roll call, please. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. Ma Councillor Nisley? Yes. Councillor Wood? Yes. Councillor Escobel? Yes. Councillor Allen? Yes. Councillor Vendetti? Yes. The next action item is we have a purchase agreement for a new street sweeper. Mr. Elson, please, sir. Good evening. How are you guys tonight? Good. And uh, well, I want to say I want to say uh, I appreciate all the support you guys get this all for the cleanup this week. It's still ongoing, so everybody still be patient with us uh, cleaning up things like that. They're bringing stuff out of the yard and stuff like that, and we'll pick up everything there. But still be patient. There are some things that we still have to address along the streets and the right of ways and the perfect. So we'll we'll get to those in a timely fashion but I appreciate all the support. Thank you. And on page 55, we went out for bid for spree sweepers, and I did get three bids. This is the Pelican is what is presented in front of you tonight, the Elgin Pelican. And I have been in contact. The city of Canyon does have three of these sweepers, and they do have a broom bear. They were not completely satisfied with the broom bear. The little one kind of looks like the sweeper we have now. They are not completely satisfied with that, but the Pelican, the uh, customer service and everything they get with this machine in front of you, uh, I don't know, I hand this out to you guys for a little thing, a little 
eye candy, I guess, if you will, <laughs> for, for public works and stuff. Our sweet sweeper is now 13 years old, and it's way beyond nickel and dimes. We're in uh, 25 cents and 50 cent pieces to repair a machine now. So, uh, and availability of parts. Like I said, the City Canyon is very, very satisfied with these machines right here. And it's it just, if, if we don't get this agreement signed within this week or tomorrow morning or something like that, we're looking at a 3% increase after January 1 for just this one machine here. So I'm asking for the assignment of the agreement for uh, $259,790 for the purchase of a brand new street sweeper. Discussion, gentlemen? Mr. Vendetti? That's as cheap as you can get, right? Yeah, it, but it's, it's top of the line. Yeah, it well, is. I mean, it's like the it another piece of equipment. You know, it just starts nickel and diamonds. It's big time. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Pretty good gas yeah, mileage. Everything this. went up. It's just crazy in price. When I bought this street sweeper we have now, the Star, the Spitfire, the Starfire, I'm sorry. I like to spin on it, but... It's uh, it was 109,000 13 years ago. So and this one here is 159, and the one we're looking at before that was 245, and it's about 156,000 for the one that looks exactly almost the same as we have now. But this is the the broom bear has two motors like we have now, so that's dual maintenance on the machine. This has one to run all the components. All the, and we get a 10-foot sweeping path out of this one with both uh, gutter brooms down and main broom. And this is a conveyor belt system rather than a squeegee system to where it picks up the material from the main broom, squeegees up like like you're cleaning your windshield on a car with a squeegee. It's got to pick that up up against an iron grate and throw it over into the machine. But this has a conveyor system. Now, like you see feeding at uh, gravel pits and stuff with the conveyor system of that nature and it does a much better job and we don't in the other the broom bear can go up to 55 miles an hour obviously we don't need 55 miles an hour to drive down you know because we used to do what we used to sweep penrose a long time ago for apple days and stuff like that so we needed it for highway speeds this one don't do over 20 miles an hour just just get from one end of town to the other we can also take this machine here. It's got a nine foot lift and dump. We can dump into a dump truck rather than hauling it all the way back to the shop. We can actually send a truck out with it. Like the heavy debris would now you guys see upon the streets. So it's gonna take a while to get that cleaned up also. We got other machinery we're gonna bring out to do that. Obviously, you know, we got skid loaders and the loaders. So you'll see us out there picking up the the smaller debris that's really in the, in the gutter piles right now. But uh, like I said, if we don't get it signed tonight, then January 1, it goes up 3% for the purchase of this machine. And Plus, uh, going back to the discussion we had this morning, probably get better gas mileage also. Y yeah, yeah, you got to have the DF, the uh, other products to put in them. In the clean burn diesels, you've got to have them now. The, the DEF products, so we have to purchase that. We have to purchase that anyways for right now for our new loader and uh, and the refuse truck also. We, we have to purchase that for the diesel exhaust fluid is what it is. The, uh, so it regens and it burns out all the soot and everything within the exhaust system that's what where you get clean diesel from and you can't get away from it that's just the way they're made now so you have to have that product to go along with your with your diesel fuel miss wood any discussion yeah just a quick question do you know about um on average how long this one lasts listen is it about 10 years again okay so the yeah, canyons got one is that's three years old and two are two years old. But they're very pleased with the product. They haven't had to do a lot of maintenance or no. It's it's just your consumables like like oil all sweepers, your brooms, 
You know, and obviously they went up in price too. Sure. Well, well, along with everything else. Yes, ma'am. Yep. yep. Um, uh -huh. And I guess, can you remind me, was this budgeted for already or is this extra? This, this is, is budgeted. a budgeted item currently Perfect. that was approved, yeah. And this is actually a little bit less, if, if I'm correct, Lori, this is a little bit less than, than uh, what was budgeted. Great. Thank you. Mr. Allen? Yep. Mr. Nicely? How many hours is on our old one? 3,600, I believe it is, 3,600 yeah. hours. That's pretty well used. Yep. Mm -hmm. Usually anything over 2,000, it starts to part it, me to death. Yeah, um, and it, there is different, different hours for different motors, if you will, because this one's got, the one we have now has dual motors on it. Right. You know? and they're so you had an hour meter on them, both of them? Yes. Oh, I see. Yes, yes, we do. Some of, some of the new equipment, I found that, uh, especially behind tractors, that the downtime sometimes in some equipment is, is quite substantial due to the regeneration. Yeah, yeah, it regens for 15 minutes to an hour long. It regens all by itself. We can't park under any, like a stack. You're not supposed to park on, underneath any trees because the exhaust is actually 1,300 degrees or higher. So you could cause some issues up there. Obviously, this one would be... Regenerated. Usually idle time has right. to be at a minimal also. I mean, yeah, yeah. can't sit there and let them warm up like usual. Well, our new loader does it when it regens, and you can just leave it, even though you got to right. shut off, it regens, leave it set there, and after an hour, it will shut itself off. So it's just the fact of the, the nature of the, the beast right now. Are, are we going to uh, surplus the other one? Are we still going to we're, we're gonna use it part time? Or? Yes, yeah, we're going to keep that one. We're going to keep that one in the fleet there for incidents like what we have now, mm -hmm. or even in, in the fall, where people are in the spring are cleaning up, cleaning the ditches out. But how much is it going to cost to get that other one fixed back up? It, it's running now. It, it's fine. But are, do our do our, are we going to have any major issues that are going to be coming up? I know you say it's got a lot of hours on it, but uh, no, it's, it's it, that's kind of unforeseen for maintenance wise and stuff. I mean, we do the maintenance on it. You know, we change the well and all that stuff there. But the elevators and stuff, we have adjusted the chains on it. We bought chains oh what two years ago, and the the chain for the elevators was like thirty five hundred dollars. And then the mandolin for the broom is, I don't know, a thousand dollars. But those are those are wear items, and we're almost at the chains are almost out of adjustment on the new one now. We had to take a link out and, and put a new one in there, or we're completely out of chain for the adjustments on the machine. Then we have to purchase chains, and then you go through the maintenance of it because that's hours down because you got to take the whole back half of the machine apart to get to the the squeegee with the elevators on it. And, and one more question on that. On the old one, Sam, is it uh, both of those engines, are they both diesel on the old one? Yes. Okay. Yep. They all they both run off of one tank. And they don't take the diesel exhaust. Because engine. if there were gas, 3,600 hours, they probably wouldn't be running. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they get hot. I mean, the hydraulic fluid's running through these machines and stuff. And that's why you see that this machine only has one gutter broom on it, our old one, because the heat from the hydraulics, from running two gutters and a main, it, it couldn't keep up. And we put an electric fan on it now, and we also moved the, the hydraulic coolers out away from the radiator because they stack everything on top of one another inside of that machine. So we, we that's why the one broom is, is missing if you will, to, just to keep the machine warm, I mean cool enough to, to run. The hydraulics does get really, really warm on those machines. I'm and all and this one gets warm <coughs> too, don't get me wrong. I'm all in favor of getting this. Uh, I would like to thank the city, all of your employees, and the job they've done with this hurricane that came through basically. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what, it's you've done a great job. Thank you. I, I tell you what, it was, it was a team effort between yes, was, all yeah. departments. I mean, <laughs> Sean, Lori, and Sarah were out there and stuff. The, the PD was helping with traffic control when we had to shut a street down. We had a lot shut down for quite a while. They helped us out quite a little bit. So we all got together and stuff. We kept the public safe. We kept our employees safe, you know. 
even though we were out there in the in the windstorm, but we always had a spotter. We we were working cutting stuff up and stuff. If you seen another guy standing over here or, or a lady over there, they're watching out above us. That was really so dangerous conditions. To yeah, be and, and they can holler. I can tell you that they can get really really loud. <laughs> you know, you know. And I told them you scream at the top of your lungs. I mean, something going on. Let us know. You know, and, and it was like I said, it was a real team effort between all departments within the city. Sam, just a couple of questions, sir. Yes, sir. Um, number one is, uh, how much of the city does a, a, the sweeper, do we do all the streets in the city? Everything with a curb and gutter, if we, and if we get a chance, we'll, we'll go down some streets without curb and gutter. Yeah, so I know that uh, there's streets in our city that are pretty rough in terms of rocks and et cetera. Yes. So mm -hmm. this new one will be able to handle that, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, yep. Uh, and the second thing I just wanted to repeat for all of us that you guys did an outstanding job with this wind and uh, kudos to you and your crew. You I know, it doesn't make any difference what time of day or what the weather is. You guys are always there for us. I Thank you. I appreciate it. And, and like, then again, that, that's all of us that were there. Exactly. Full team effort, admin, PD, water, ourselves. And we, we had to have some contractor help Obviously, because we don't have a bucket truck to get some of the widow makers way up high at Larry to keep, you know, from falling on the public property or even somebody's fence or something of that nature. We, we had to have some help. I couldn't do it all by ourselves, or we couldn't do it all by ourselves. We had to have bucket trucks come in and help us to get the real high hanging stuff. And we still have a few out there, so, you know, bear with us and we'll get that done. And, and the property owners are bringing their stuff out. Which is understandable. The pit is open now. It'll be open till the end of the week, so the property owners can take them out there and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate there's some of them that cut up some of the big pines and stuff and lay them in the curbs. So some of the uh, property owners that have wood burning stoves, say in their garages and stuff like that, they're they come by and picking up the, the bigger material, like the pine and stuff like that, for future use. So mm -hmm. that's helping a lot too. Any public comment on the purchase of the new sweeper? Yes, sir. Uh, I, on the rebid system, I've yeah. got a Ford truck. I just want to know if you hear me get a chance to warranty. Because on the Ford truck, it won't warranty it. It just lasts 130,000 miles on a regular deal on an hour basis. Yeah. It lasts at 72, mm -hmm. dollars to replace it. Yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of that so, on, on so the Ford. On the Ford. Sure <laughs> I really can't do this about it, but right. hopefully you get one. Yeah, we got the same thing. It's 150,000 miles on the machine, and yeah, they broke it down in hours. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't quite understand the hours or how that works into it and stuff. And, and if we went into a lease agreement for for the machine, say we lease it for three to five years and get a brand new machine, well, the lease agreement actually add money to the cost of, of a brand new machine. So we decided to go ahead and, and Sean and myself and, and Lori decided to go ahead and purchase this machine outright rather than spend the extra cost at this time. And the regen system, yeah. I've, I've Ford, Chevy, the Duramaxes and stuff like that. I, I've heard they had problems with that and problems with the, the tank itself within there and, and the diesel exhaust fluids and, and DPS, the diesel particulate filters are the same. The take a digger, if you will. So, but yeah, I understand, I understand it. No further comments. Uh, I would entertain a motion to purchase the street sweeper. I make a motion we purchase the agreement for the new street sweeper. May I have second. a second, please? Yes, second. Any further discussion? None? Roll call, please. Councillor Escobel? Yes. Councillor Vendetti? Yes. Councillor Wood? Yes. Councillor Allen? Yes. Councillor Nicely? Yes. Mayor Villagrana? Yes. Um, Sam, thank you for doing all that research, too, on, you know, 
not just price comparison, but you know durability comparison with yeah. with our neighbors. That yeah. really makes a big difference. So we, we've got to do that. <laughs> we don't have it. They do. Hey. I'd like to know how it performs. Exactly. Yes. Yep. 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 Thank, Thank you all. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Uh, for our next meeting, the coming agenda items will be a resolution for designating official posting locations for 2022, appointment of parking committee members, pay scale ordinance, resolution for employee sick bank, city manager designation ordinance, resolution for city meeting rules, resolution for city hall rental space fees, updates for to municipal traffic violations ordinances. Ordinance? Uh, ordinance. Council? <laughs> Council, any comments on these? Anything that we need to add? Um, if I could, yes. I would like to add, um, I'd like uh, the other, a couple times here lately, I've noticed that I've only got, that we've only got one officer on duty. I'd like to check with the police department. I'd like to know where those two new officers are that we voted on a couple months ago. And also an update on the, the car stop thing. Boom, the stops the stolen cars. Did we get that, the grappler? So I'd uh, like an update from the police department next meeting on a couple of those items if we could. Okay, so not tonight. We're so add that to our agenda, please. No. Uh, would you like to update right now, sir? You have time to update now, Deputy Chief? Yes, I do. Yes, okay. I do. Uh, as far as the grappler goes, um, I've been in contact with a guy. He's out of Phoenix, Arizona. His name is Leonard Stock. He actually designed and uh, built these. He's going to be in Colorado Springs installing six for the uh, Colorado Springs Police Department in mid-January. And uh, a week later, because it'll take him about a week to do that, a week later he'll be in Florence uh, to install uh, at least one for us, um, the one that uh, we already have the, uh, the funds for. And then uh, what we're going to try to do is – <clears throat> get a spot big enough and obviously we'll in, we'll uh, with your work schedules but it'll be probably be during the day is invite you guys for the training because it'll be a it'll be a whole day training and take him about four hours to install it and then the rest of the day would be training and probably part of the next day um, because each officer that's going to be trained on it has to do at least four reps with it and that doesn't cost us it's just training uh, grappler things that that they'll provide so we'll get it at least four reps per officer um, we're just trying to find a location, whether we use the airport, one of the runways, because they're not that, you know, they're not that busy this time of year, or um, another place would be right over here um, during, their, uh, during their break uh, yeah, on 5th Street, right in front of the uh, elementary school. Uh, State Patrol does stop stick training, so um, that's, that'll be plenty of room for us to do the grappler training over there. Okay. And as far as the officers go, I think we're, I think we're right on track. I haven't heard anything different. Um, I just think we're waiting for the uh, for the new budget in 2022. Am I right? Um, so I think we're right on track. I don't think we've got. I think we've only got what two applications so far, or one. I don't think we've received any applications. Oh. I do have it posted on the city website, and I did get it posted on CML today. Okay. So an update on that, um, Mr. Allen, is that uh, I've had some interest from local agencies of officers that want to transfer to us. Um, so I'm going to guess that they're waiting till the end of the year because we told them that we weren't hiring anybody till the beginning of the year. Okay. But we do have other agencies that are interested in working here. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Council, any other item that you would like to see on our next agenda? Mr. Bimbetti? Uh Yeah, I'd like to talk about uh, designating uh, Triangle Park as right out of Marchaletta uh, Memorial Park as opposed to the uh, Skateboard Park. Ms. Wood, any items for the next agenda? No. no. Mr. Nicely? No. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Mr. Escobar? I would like None. to know what agenda that was on that we voted for the new offices because I didn't have a vote on that. I, I would like to know what agenda that was on and that happened after an executive session as well. You know, that was part of the, part of the, the that was part of the budget. It's part of the budget. Yes. Right. The budget doesn't, when we look at the line items on the budget, we don't see add two police officers. We see 5% more, 7% more. All I ever seen was a display up here when there was an officer that chased somebody halfway to Pueblo 
leaving our town unattended while somebody else was chasing another fugitive down to Pueblo. That's actually That's not correct, sir. Um, he was doing an agency assist, and on his way back into town, he encountered a a driver that was going over the line, um, possibly a drunk driver. So he's actually coming back into our town um, on an agency assist where Fremont County requested his assistance to cover them. Um, and then, yes, that, that's when it ensued. And as far as the budget goes, we uh, this was probably September, October. There were two, uh, Lori put two, there, it's, it's in there, it specifically states, uh, it went from X amount of dollars to X amount of dollars. I don't re recall what well, the dollar correct, but for the two changes. police officers, but it, mean, it, it passed with you guys. Yeah, um, okay, over the it budget. passed. It, it did. I, I understand that we voted for, but I we I don't remember being involved in a discussion where uh, we were adding police officers. We we're already down to six patrol officers and seven people that work in the administration. Doesn't seem. I mean, I think it needs to be analyzed a little closer before we start adding more officers. The whole idea of adding the officers is officer safety. I understand that, but maybe some of those in administration can start contributing a little more to the rest of our patrolling. I don't disagree on all that, but uh, uh, speaking for myself, I can only work so many hours in a day. Do we have a designated officer just for the GRMO? Uh, do we have a designated a part, officer a just for officer. training? No. I do the training also as the deputy police chief. Well, then what do the other seven administrative officers do? I'm not sure who you're talking about with seven administrative. You have 13 people and only six patrolmen. My math says that's seven. We have two patrol sergeants and four patrol or five patrol officers. There's seven. We have a part-time police officer who does do DRMO, who's a lieutenant. Well, we still call him the lieutenant. You have the chief, the deputy chief, and an SRO, and two detectives. Because we had in this me in one of our meetings. The chiefs say we had 13 people in the police department. Okay. Okay. And there's only supposed to be six on patrol. I'm just saying it some seems a little lopsided. That's there. why we're trying to add because our patrol division is, is short right now. When we have one person on vacation and the patrol division, that means one person works 10 hours by themselves. Okay. And Mr. Escobel, anything about and adding to the agenda? No, thank you. Yes, sir. And that's what I want to make sure, uh, okay. that we've got enough people on patrol so our officers are safe. I want to make sure that's what's happening. So We're also looking at a million and a half dollars per year for 3,000 people. I mean, we do need to watch that very closely. We do. I, no, I, we don't. I there agree is. totally, but <laughs> these guys are the ones out with guns protecting themselves and, and your neighbors and yourself. And, and I don't want them to be unprotected. I also don't want them running halfway to Pueblo on an intergovernmental agreement by their self. Why, that makes complete sense, too. That absolutely makes sense. You know, gentlemen, I, I really do believe that our police force always acting in the best interest of the citizens of Florence. I really do believe that. And I question sometimes why they're there or where they shouldn't be, but then they've always had a solid answer for me, and I thank you. It, Mr. Mayor, r right now you got Fremont County who's running with three deputies for the whole county. Sometimes you're right. We do go to the coal camp areas because mm -hmm. we're requested. Um, that's when we have two people on or maybe a sergeant and, and nobody's on vacation. But we never, with the exception of, that, of the incident when we showed you on the, uh, the video, we don't leave the city unprotected. Um, and we specifically make sure that unless it's life or death with another officer from another agency, that there's always one person in this city on duty. You know, uh, Mr. Benelli, um, are we really positive on the aspect of vacations, et cetera, that we're not limiting one officer? You know, uh, I heard that discussion, so. I, I, I guess I don't know what you're asking. I, I guess maybe, you know, all I'm saying is that sometimes we have to plan vacations, and uh, sometimes a vacation may cut one of our departments short of help. And are we making sure that our police officers, as it was addressed, that there's not because of shortage of officers that we don't have one just on duty? We're making every attempt to do that, and, and you're right. I mean, we, we have at our disposal, I mean, I've written some grants for DUI over time. Um, there's a lot of times that I will come in because I, you know, the officers 
I mean, they're burnt, well, they're not burnt out, but I mean, they just don't sign up for the overtime. So I'll work DUI overtime just so one of our officers isn't on by him or herself until midnight, one o'clock in the morning, um, just to make sure there's two people on duty. So we, we augment each other, or we augment the department, I try to schedule it like that, but there's sometimes when, uh, a few weeks ago, when one of the, one of the corporals was, who works 4P to 2A, took three days off to go see her family in uh, New York. Uh, once the eight o'clock officer, or the 10 to eight sergeant got off, the 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. person was by themselves for 10 hours. That's where we run into it. If they get a DUI or a domestic or anything like that, they're tied up for, and we have to call somebody out, which runs into the overtime problem, um, which we try to cut down on. So the only way to, is why we requested two officers um, rather than trying to burn through all this money on the overtime budget that we don't have a lot of. I mean, we've got some, but still it's a, it's a officer safety. I don't want that phone call in the middle of the night that one of the officers got hurt. I just don't. So that's why we asked for it. And we're also no. supplying new cars for each officer, correct? No, that's not correct. That's not correct. So we isn't have that two, what we do individually? We have two, cars? Spare, we have two spare cars. Um, we have because I found one of them in Pueblo today. Was there a good reason for that? I found them out of town many times. Yeah, uh, is this for personal use? No, it was never. For, it's never for of personal course use. Not. So, so anytime that they're out of town, it's uh, it's either for business or uh, training, or what? Or training could be, but could uh, be. yeah, we take our cars to training all the time. And for personal. You know, I've had the occasion to be at the uh, county commissioners, and I've seen our officers uh, go to a meeting that was important yes, sir. to them. So, you know, again, sir, thank you for all what you do, and I'm quite sure that you guys have figured out how to protect each other as well as protecting the citizens of Florence. Yes, sir. Thank you. you now, do we need an executive session? We are not requesting any executive sessions. Mr. Lawyer? Do you have a question back in the back seat? Yes. Tim Jordan, 844 Sumo Avenue. Last October, the city spent $1,700 on a workplace assessment, most of which was City Hall, and some of it was the police department. Some of these questions that you're asking back and forth are in the staffing assessment. I'd recommend maybe looking at that, and maybe that'll cut down on some of the confusion. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, John. City Council Member, do you wish an executive session? No? Then, <laughs> then I will adjourn this meeting at 8, 7, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's 7.45.